Hi, my name's Adam, I'm a junior doctor. Can I check your name and date of birth? Yeah, uh, Harry Miles, 21st of the 10th, 1998. Today I need to check the blood flow to your leg. This will involve me inflating a cuff around your arm and your ankle and then checking your pulse with a probe. The cuff will feel tight, but it shouldn't be painful and you can ask me to stop at any time. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Before we start the examination, are you in any pain? No. Do you have any past medical history? No. Please, can you get up onto the examination couch? Mm-hmm. You lift your arm up. If you lift your leg up. Okay, we're all finished. You can get dressed now. Thanks for your time. Hey, it's Lewis from Geeky Medics. I'm just going to briefly talk through how Adam would then go about calculating ABPI based on the results that he found when assessing Harry. So to calculate the ABPI for the right leg, we need to take the highest systolic reading that we measured in the right leg, and that might be from either the posterior tibial artery or the dorsalis pedis artery, and then once we have that value, we need to divide it by the highest brachial pressure that we recorded. So that could be from either the left or the right arm. So in this case, the highest pressure in the right leg was from the posterior tibial artery, and that was 150 millimeters of mercury. And the highest brachial pressure that we recorded in the video was in the right arm, and that was 130 millimeters of mercury. I do realize we didn't show you the assessment of blood pressure on the left arm, so you're just gonna to have to trust me on this one. So the ABPI result in this case for Harry is 1.15, which is in the normal range. If we wanted to then calculate the ABPI for the left leg, we would do the exact same process, but we would use the value from the left leg in terms of the highest pressure measured the number we're dividing by would remain the same. I'll also briefly discuss ABPI reference ranges. So an ABPI of one is what is typically referred to as normal. However, an ABPI of between 0.8 and 1.3 suggests that there is no significant peripheral arterial disease present. An ABPI of between 0.5 and 0.79 is suggestive of mild or moderate peripheral arterial disease, and an ABPI of less than 0.5 is suggestive of severe peripheral arterial disease, and this often requires specialist input from vascular surgeons. An abnormally raised ABPI of greater than 1.3 is suggestive of significant calcification of the arterial system. This makes the true assessment of vascular status challenging, and as a result, these patients often require further investigation using other modalities such as duplex ultrasound and or angiography. Hopefully that was helpful for you all. 
If you want to learn more about ABPI measurement, do check out our guide on the Geeky Medics website. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out the Geeky Medics collection of over 900 ready made OSCE stations. You can practice with friends using our advanced group practice mode or interact with our amazing AI powered virtual patients.